stay-at-home dad Watching Disney movies he never had His daughter digs through all the VHS Crushing the classics in a princess dress Informed like Scuttle, Kurt's got your ticket Making it real like Jiminy Cricket Most are off the Captain Hook, but if the Tweedledum He'll be taking more shots than Bambi's mom Leaves him raised like Simba or cracked like the Beast Dishes He'll show you a whole new world You won't need free wish Stay at home, Disney What is this? We press play on the VCR ads for all the straight to video B grade Disney movies. Always a good sign. Computer animated library opening. We do the book flipping pages. They recap Beauty and the Beast like the movie. We go to Bell's book and music shop and we dissolve from animation into real footage. There's puppets and a live bell. I don't know what's going on. As I try to wrap my head around this, I am just like in awe. This video exists. The worms are named Lewis and Carol. Okay, this is like Fraggle Rock. No, I didn't want to compare it to the Muppets. This ain't Muppets. This is Fraggle Rock. They're gonna clean and decorate a cart and fill it with books and take it to town. The worm tells Belle, the feather duster needs a feather duster. It's not dirty. We go to a live action flashback. Belle's been cleaning all morning and a terrifying giant puppet cat is lazy. It doesn't want to help. And then there's like a talking red faced Satan book. It's like the devil's face is on the cover of a book and it's interacting with Belle in a condescending tone. She's like, I wish I had help cleaning the house. And they fade to black so that was a cliffhanger stay tuned moment for this show leading into a commercial break that she needs to clean cool now some child actors arrive and Belle wants them to help her clean and says it's fun then falls over I'm sure it's fun if you've been drink if you've been day drinking like our gal here Kristen doesn't want to help Belle is like well you can watch while well, the rest of us have fun cleaning and Kristen's like okay because Kristen doesn't give a f and that reverse psychology stuff doesn't work on my girl Kristen. The kids start fighting, and the Satan book says he's going to tell them a story of Morris the Midget Moose. Oof, not making that up. Uh, into an animated shirt we go, Morris the Moose. Wait, wasn't this Morris the Moose? Remember him? Core memory unlocked. Morris here was always up the bear's shit, wasn't he? Okay, Morris is little and couldn't grow. Then there's an alpha king moose named Thunderclap, and all the lesser alpha moose want to take his spot and fight him. So Morris thinks he has a shot and gets in line as Thunderclap murders everyone else. And now it's Morris's turn, and he gets laughed at. Also, Thunderclap, what people called my ex-girlfriend back in high school. Mm. You can't buzz facts. You can't buzz facts, people, okay? Morris lost the fight but met another moose named Balsam. He's a giant moose with small antlers. Okay, the worm puppets are called the bookworms. I get it. The book suddenly starts telling the story and says, I'm going to sit back and let the bookworms sing the rest of the story. So now they recap what's happened so far in song form. Together they bumble, and now it's two against one with the moose, and they beat Thunderclap. How is that a lesson? Tag team of unreal it's like some other production company bought the generic rights to beauty and the beast and then made this like the original beauty and the beast story and then disney bought it at their like garage sale and we're like meh it's beauty and the beast mom's waiting in line at the checkout we'll grab this for their screaming kids without really looking past the disney logo and the classic beauty and the beast artwork on the front out of that story the real people clean for like two minutes and then take a break while bell reads them the story of Hansel and Gretel, and we go into old-timey nightmare animation. And I think a lot of this is actually recut animation from some old-timey Christmas cartoons I reviewed last December. I don't know, this is just weird. That's it. They come out of the cartoon and the actors, and then back in, and then a witch comes, and the singer sings, witches have a way of making you do what they say. Terrifying. God, this old footage is horrible. Imagine thinking you were getting like another Beauty and the Beast movie and you got this instead? I don't know, folks. I'm watching this like it's not real. I'm watching this like it was the wrong tape. 
in the VHS case, but no, Disney slapped their logo on this and sold it. Back to real people. That little girl is traumatized from that footage and is like, okay, I'll help, I'll help. Just don't tell me any more of the story. Don't make me watch anymore. The kid actors are so bad. I'm sorry. There's so many dissolves and fades to blacks. I can't tell what's happening in real time and what is the flashback and what is the current timeline. We are on and I feel like it doesn't matter anyway. Suddenly we're getting a close up of a gingerbread house and Belle tells the kids, you have to be careful of gingerbread houses because that's where the witch lived. Wonderful. Gingerbread houses in summer and a warning that they could also bring death. Doing great, Belle. Uh, they talk about rain and obviously that reminds her of a story about Mrs. Potts and wow, finally we go into real Disney animation footage of like Beauty and the Beast, like the real animation style and voices from the original movie. Mrs. Potts is having a midlife crisis because she served hot water with no tea. This has characters from one of the other sequels. So this must have been like an extra short they didn't use in one of these two and slapped it here with, and surrounded it with garbage and released it on VHS. Honestly, what is the deal with this VHS? There's talking books and a pen. There's bickering oven mitts. Like, I realize this short was the selling feature of the VHS tape, obviously, but like nothing is happening. They're treading water as they bicker about what kind of cake to bake for Mrs. Potts. They pick up flowers. Potts is still down in the dumps. Nothing is happening. I don't know if I'm just burnt out from the insanity that was like the first half of this yard sale of video clips, but there's nothing to write about. There's nothing to cover. They're having a surprise party for Potts to cheer her up, and we're coasting to like 20 minutes of nothing happening. There's flowers and cake, and all that's happening is every character is arguing about the flowers and the cake and how they should be done and presented. After that, Nothing. The party goes off without a hitch and they all realize they had to get along and work together to make it happen. Alright, the sunlight comes out. And between that and the surprise party, Mrs. Potts comes out of her funk. No beast at all in that whole cartoon. We're back to the bookworms and we jump into the story of the wise little hen. But like we go to live footage into a flashback of live footage in the exact same location to a flashback of the animated story, The Devil Book and Bell are cooking. There's a super funny edit where the worms make a bad joke, and then they cut to the human actors and they all just turn back from the worms without reacting to that joke at all. It's a weird, hilarious edit. It makes them look super b Imagine your friends making a joke and you just don't react and turn back to whatever you were doing and just like resume that conversation, just ignoring them. No nod or smile or like, haha, <laughs> pity laugh. Now some kid who doesn't want to help cook the chili but I'll bet he'll want to eat the chili when it's done is here. Lessons are coming at us. Again, the lazy kid and the lazy cat are playing poker. That's awesome. And the other kids are complaining about how that's not fair. And welcome to life. Okay, so this was a real life flashback to a real life flashback of the time they pitched to a cartoon about Mother Hen. I got it. None of them wanted to help Mother Hen cook. You know the story. No one wants to help cook or prep, but everyone wants to eat. But told in old-timey nightmare animation like this, I figured it was creepy old stock footage Disney bought, but no! Donald Duck shows up in it. I can't! Ah, uh, but in this cartoon, the animals that didn't help don't get to eat. Let's see what happens in real life. Come out of the flashback, the chili's done. Belle cracks the whip and makes the cat and the kids set the table, but not before. She motivates them with a story in song form. It's the three little pigs and we go back into animation. Even after the story ends, the cat still decides he doesn't want to help after all. And we fade to black for, I guess, a commercial break. Uh, the chili is done. Everyone sits at the table. It's time to eat, time for tough love. Harmony, the lazy cat, didn't help. And now they freeze him out. No food for you, you stupid cat. Then he learns a lesson and the devil book dunks on her. And Sean, this kid, comes up with an idea. Harmony, the lazy cat, can eat but then has to clean the dishes. Lesson learned. Belle proposes a toast to all the stories and the kids and we dissolve into what I assume is the extra. We're wrapping stuff up and we go back to the worms making a gingerbread house. I forgot about that. And they come out of that and they're finishing up their traveling bookshop cart and they want to take it to the village. The sign goes from the real video back into the animation. We roll credits and what the actual was that. That's what I think about. What do you think? What we have is a concern about Curtis Anderson. His interviewing style is not the best. His personal appearance is not the best. I was wondering if the man has some kind of a hold over the channel that uh, he's allowed to be employed for so long with the standards of journalism 